so um hello let's let's go on with this um review of um the last match between uh team bm versus team cc um so um let's let's get started by talking about like the korean meta right now so um what is like the korean meta um, so um the regional metas like let's go over the other regions first um the na meta is just like brawl basically brawl only and you and like the only real variations are like may Doomfist and like some map specific cheese like you know sim cheese on Li Zhang. <clears throat> EU meanwhile okay EU meta is really just um mostly brawl but but some double shield and like the reason there's like some double shield is because some teams are EU is like really experimental and like some teams are just like they like to play cheese a lot. Like for example, Ex Oblivion, Ex Oblivion, they really like to play um real weird comps. Like they played Double Shield recently, which I reviewed, and also, uh, but like, and also like um, I'm not sure about um Australia. China is probably the same as in Korea usually, but like in Korea, what's the Korean meta? Oh fuck, my handwriting's bad. In Korea, it's it's map dependent, map dependent, and even like even map dependent and like um oh shit, this is quite the this is quite the yeah um map dependent and also um and also like different teams have like different preferences, so it's also preference dependent. So, um, what comps does Korea like to run usually? So, um, and the closest thing to a meta in Korea is ball, ball comps, like ball plus either Zarya, Sigma, or, um, Diva, sometimes Orisa, but it's a really cheese pick. And, um, and like this is like the standard comp really like it's played on I've seen it played on like a wide variety of maps like even like uh, regardless of the sight lines because generally like this comp likes long sight lines but like but like I even see this comp a lot in like short sight line maps like um like for example like uh, yeah, well King's Row is not an example just because like ooh hi Marvel Squad how's it going so um. King's Row is like a really long like sightline map sometimes, so that's not a good example. But just I'm just saying maps like um, Oasis, for example, like Oasis University, and um, and like so yeah, like Ball is like basically like the closest thing we have to meta in Korea. But like there are like other comps being played. The second common is probably like Double Bubble. Like, like you know, Winston's Zarya usually with like Tracer Ash. Like, Koreans like they don't really like play Echo that much. Some teams play Echo, but they generally they prefer Ash. They still think that Ash is really good, and I I have to agree with them. Like, Ash like, got got nerfed. Like her one shot got nerfed, but like she's still like a menacing like threat in long sight lines. And but more importantly, she counters Echo like if played properly because like. Echo can't just like damage an Ash if like he, she can't close the distance. And like the problem that like Double Bubble has to solve in the first place is closing the distance. So like you want to play like um so like um yeah like closing distance is going to be hard like against like a ball comp especially. So so like yeah Double Bubble is like another another comp but like I've seen it less and less actually like recently like I see more ball nowadays. And Double Bubble is good on maps with high ground and like medium length sight lines where uh, or like where like you know Brawl isn't like too powerful but like neither is Ball too powerful. So like yeah but it's, but like the most important thing is high ground so like Gibraltar and for example. And uh, what's another map? And Numbani is another one where Double Bubble is usually played. The third most common comp I say it's Double Shield so. 
So like Arista Sigma. And like uh, eventually, like I've I've, I've I've like believed that like Arista Sigma has actually got like surpassed like Double Bubble in popularity. I've seen it more and more in the recent like weeks in Korea and also in EU as well. But like the reason is because like Double Shield, a lot of teams are really getting really good at running Double Shield. It's just it's just the understanding of Double Shield is like way past like these comps for like a lot of teams and like now Double Shield is is like not as passive anymore it's like more or more like aggressive looking for aggressive angles looking for advantages based on having angles and stuff but like yeah like double shield getting actually getting pretty popular now and finally the combat koreans don't really like to play is brawl so i'll just do it in red because it's um, represents the popularity and like the only time like brawl is played is like Brawl maps basically and payload maps where like you know Brawl is played as a defensive comp where like Where like you, you're looking to like hold short sight lines and delay the payload as much as possible That's why Brawl is really popular in short sight line maps uh, not short sight line maps I mean it is like it is popular in short sight line maps, but not only in short sight line maps, but um also in payload defense maps where like payload defense in general where like you can delay the card like eight to nine times and and like still like even if you lose all your team fights you're still in the card so hard that like they're just gonna they're just gonna like lose and like usually koreans like they usually run ryan diva like the classic they don't really stray off from the meta like the meta may creep bap lucio like they don't like running doomfist except as like a really cheesy stall pick um they also don't like running ryan zarya they sometimes like running ryan orissa but they i've never seen like ryan zarya or barely see it. But that's the same with all regions. They don't like Ryan Zarya anymore. Like, Ryan Zarya it just takes too much time to get value out of. Like, you need, like, one or two cycles of bubbles in order for your Zarya to actually do something significant. And like D.Va, which can get value instantly. And has, like, a lot of peeling and mobility and good stuff. So there's no reason to run Zarya when you just have D.Va most of the time. But anyways, on to the VOD. Um, People in Cuba aren't really allowed to leave so um right here um team bm are running um double sh i mean not double shield like ball arissa this is a weird pick and the problem with ball arissa is just that i grew up like you know some people like i grew up i mean it's okay on defense uh but um i grew up um it's just that like arissa is just like too stationary like you place a shield that's where your team's gonna be anchored for the next 10 seconds like you don't have to hide behind the shield obviously but like six shield is like you can place it and then re and then retract it and place it again and it's and like sig has like can cycle like shield plus plus like you know the grasp and also like sig requires less healing because like most of his like his sustain doesn't come from his hp but his abilities so like um like not like just like most of his like you know health pool so to speak comes from a not like hp because like arissa fortify just like still like depletes hp so like you gotta be putting unnecessary pressure on your support to heal you when it should be going towards ball tracer maybe hanzo but um yeah like mercy hanzo mercy's gonna be pocketing hanzo but um Arissa just like kind of like it, it kind of just like not only makes your comp too stationary but um it also like um requires um, to a lot more support than, like not a lot more support but just like quite a bit more support than like sigma the advantage is that in long sight lines this is why they're probably playing like this Arissa like in longer sight lines Arissa does get value earlier than sigma because Arissa has unlimited range while sigma has like 22 meters of range so so yeah, I think the Arissa is okay on defense, not stellar, still not stellar. Meanwhile, Team CC are playing double shield, so like, what they really want to do is like, they want to, against this comp, what they want to do is like, they want to take angles against this comp, and like, so like, you know, thing is that like, uh, with like, the ball comp, like, you have like, one less, like, not only one less shield, but like, um, just like less you just kind of lose the poke battle if you're just like standing if both teams are just staring at each other like orissa orissa like alone orissa is not going to beat like orissa plus hanzo plus pockets plus zen poke is not going to beat like all of 
all of this poke. Like, May counts as poke as well. May actually does a significant amount of poke, but... The thing is that, like, um, Orisa and... Orisa alone isn't gonna, like... Especially if Sigma takes off angles and the core is gonna just gonna be poked out. So, like, let's say... Um, so, like, yeah, the core is just gonna be poked out because, like, you can only shield one way. So, like, what does um, Team BM have to do? Team BM has to, like, you know, play passively when, like, they're... Or passively, I don't like the word passive. Defensive, yeah. Play defensively, play natural cover, play a bit less, peak a bit less, like, play safe, like, when, when the ball's still trying to, like, just play, like, draw a bit of attention when the ball's still trying to, like, you know, stage. And in this case, like, staging will be easier because, like, they don't have a ball to match nor a tracer. They don't have a tracer to, like, match either ball or tracer. So, like, um, this... So, like, Ball Tracer will just get, you know, will just be able to Sage for free, basically. Well, not for free, because, like, what Team CC should be trying to do is, like, trying to poke out Ball as much as possible. Try to maybe poke out Tracer if possible, but, like, just prevent them from ever engaging. Because, like, if Team team BM do engage, then, like, what happens is just that, it's just that, like, uh, Team BM can use, like, the Power Spike brawn by their engagement to... To, like, go more aggressive, like, that's when Hanzo might want to Storm Arrow. That's when, like, Zen wants to 5 Orb. That's when, um... Uh, that's when, like, you can play more aggressively in general. And that's when you actually threaten kills on a back line, especially Bab Zen. Zen is a target, so... But Team CC, they just have to, like, not only take angles, but, like, try to just, like, deny, like, dives as much as possible by the ball. And deny dives not by throwing abilities, because you don't... In this meta, it's bad to use abilities, like, defensively. And, like, like just to use, like, you know, abilities just to survive. Because, like, even if they use abilities and you repel a dive, if you don't kill them, then, like, you're getting, they're still making a lot of space for their team, so. Especially as, like, as, like, being aggressive in this meta, is, like, you know, compared to previous metas, is more important than before. Playing the Orisa ball again. Uh, BM really like this Orisa, can't say that much. But they will come through on a Hans, which is a little bit different. Usually, this would be an Ash. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it is broke, usually this would be an Ash. So, um, just showing like the first fight, and um, they have Orisa Sigma on low ground. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it is taking angles and. They, um, some, they could try like, you know, rotate high ground and try to take it directly, but I think that they're just, they're just gonna like say, hey, we still have like resources to use, so like, we're, we're just gonna like force a point and force you to drop off high ground, or at least force like most of your players to drop off high ground. And, um... Oh, so like, this is a good example. <clears throat> So let's look at where Babel is. Babel is like using storm arrows. Babel might want to go high ground, but as you can see, like the, the, when the ball slams, this is like a window where like where like Team BM can actually get picks or like force out a lot of cooldowns. And in this case, Babel like hides in like the stairs a bit, and then when Chun Sam slams, like. Tracer wants to go in, like, I'm not sure if Tracer goes in, Tracer should be going in. If, unless, like, she's busy with something. I'm not sure why they're not healing. Like, Illicit's low. Illicit's low, why, why, wait. I think they're just, main, they're just, like, playing so passive sight lines. Or, like, Illicit's, like, out, not where, or maybe, like, outside. Like, Zen there is okay. Like, Zen, like, right here. Zen right here might be okay, but, like... But, like, you know, but, like, this... But, like, uh, yeah, like, how is Lissa gonna get heals if he goes from this way? So, maybe Team BM do drop from high ground, like, a bit too early. Maybe it just, like, yeah, but... Yeah, Babel dies. Babel... I mean, not Babel dies. Babel gets a pick on his hand. Um, and this is just like, hmm, how can it be prevented? Uh, yeah, like, Sigma is trying to, like, port put the shield, but... Yeah, and now, like, they use their slam. What they should be doing is, like, they tr should trying to be stabilizing, hopefully heal up your damn tracer, and then, like, 
and then like after you heal up your tracer then like you can go in and try to finish them and like the fact that they lost ash ash means that like they can like try to like stage more aggressively like there's no like ash to poke them out so like maybe a ball will get healed and it will take like but like still like you know Orisa pokes can be significant so if anything it will just like equalize and make team bm be able to play like a bit a bit slower actually and just try to like poke out because um because yeah like um thing overarching thing is that team bm should wait for ball to like don't have ball take so much damage and then like just engage on the back line again but um what team cc could do is like now they lost their ash now they might want to like now they might want to like go actually maybe go more aggressive like you know for try to finish the quiet fight quickly they have like they're quite brawly actually so like they could just like they could just like you know go in and try to like engage this Orisa at close range and try to like exploit the fact that balls like low tracers low and still trying to like you know recharge so like they could just try to attack through like when team bm's weak like right now so like i think that's what they do and what team bm have to do is recognize this and kind of like play passively like really passively until like ball is able to come back and in this case protect does like i think protect just like just like stays here might might should have just kited earlier like protects like playing forward but like uh, team cc will just like you know they use it more they take angles and then they kill like protect so i don't think they should have i think they should have backed up and they kill protect but um but like now that they kill protect then like this means like Babel loses the shield and has no like significant high ground to use now they won't just want to kill the core but like but you have to be careful like team cc shouldn't just w key in like instantly because like look there's still a ball they lost Arissa, but that doesn't mean like they still don't like the zen's like somewhere but like they still have like ball ball tracer like somewhere in like the flank so like they have to chill here and then like just look who's on the flank is, is there everyone on the flank like is there a ball or a tracer on the flank then if so just try to poke them out before going in like if they just push this like if they just try to aggressively push this then like ignore the ball tracer then it's just gonna be so scuffed like they're just gonna tracer's just gonna kill and i think that's yeah that's what they do and i did see that's what they did do but I, yeah that's what they did they just got two in the back line because they they didn't account for that. I mean, like, they were are kind of low, so, like, they kind of, they had some trouble stabilizing, but still, I don't think they're doing a great job of checking the, checking the flanks. And even though, like, yeah, Chun Sam, whatever they do, like, Chun Sam, like, he never fully stabilizes like before like in between fights like it's just it's, it seems like that he's just like always half hp like in mid fight like look now he's half hp and then like if, if he slams then he's just gonna get focused even though illicit does get two kills like chun sam's just gonna get focused nobody's healing him and that's a disadvantage of running like the mercy in exchange for having more poke like it's it's just that like your ball no your ball doesn't have like great healing unless it goes all the way back and gives away map control but like yeah like that's a disadvantage of the mercy but but it just it just appears like yeah like team cc are like team cc like they did put a lot of pressure beginning of the fight so and i think that's actually good because it exploits the fact that like their ball and tracer were half hp so like if they had no pressure applied to them then it means that like they could zen could just place orbs on ball tracer or in mercy could just focus on like or maybe healing ball if possible but like no they can't because they just push so aggressively so good by team cc for them to push aggressively just that they didn't check the angles and chun sam does die but let's see what happens um they're so they're 5v6 um they still have to check the flank though they got two and yeah like illicits two picks is just too big 
They lose Tay, they lose Arissa. That's bad. So anyways, um, let's continue with the rest of the run. Um, anyway, so now, um, they're coming up to Mayfree, so... So now, like, I think Team CC want to, like, actually, like, you know, close the distance and play Brawly. Like, or, like, another option they can do is that they could throw the freeze and then, like, try to, like, maybe as a space-making freeze and then use that to set up angles. Or, preferably, I prefer to actually have them set up angles before freezing because I don't want, I don't want May Freeze to be used as a zoning ult, actually. Like, even though it is against, like, well, like, yeah, like, I don't want, like, it to be used as a zoning ult. Because, oh, well, more like, yeah, they're on high ground, first of all, but, uh, anyways, um... They, I want them to either like go aggressively, to go into brawl range, and try to just brawl them in like short sight lines where this cop is kind of weak. Or like alternatively, they should just try to like set up angles first and then freeze. So if they pull combo. Oh, how did Ezhan kill Alyssa? Alyssa might have overcommitted somewhere. Oh, this is telegraphed. So Alyssa, I think, dropped from high ground. Yeah, dropped from high ground, tried to chase, like, S-Hand, but S-Hand just clicks his head. So that was kind of sloppy. That was an unnecessary play. And, and well, actually, Chun-Sam tries to slam them. Well, firstly, first of all, like, they're slamming tanks, first of all, yeah. Like, I know there was a pull, but, like, you know, they can just, like, go back in. And, like, in any case, have the M more, so, like... I think they should just give them a bit more space, let the backline get out before engaging. Maybe, like, they're gonna try to, like, poke out, like, Chun Sam from here, but, like, there is a lot of cover you can use to prevent that from happening, so. But more importantly, like, like, oh, this is a mistimed. This is just mistimed. Like, Chun Sam goes slammed, like, after, like, Elissa dies. It's, it's sloppy. And so now, like, they're just gonna like the super charm. They're just gonna like bongo and then like, and and then they're just gonna brawl. <laughs> like this is just a brawl. Doesn't matter if there's a ball behind. Ball like use cooldown so like ball can't engage. You only have to worry like if you're fast enough, then you can like actually go in without like checking flanks because like you know by the time like they can actually threaten you with their flank, then like you already wanted to fight so. Yeah, like, Team BM just, like, lose their Tracer early, and then, like, Team CC just W key in. And Chun Sam, like, doesn't, because Tracer dies, they don't force a lot of cooldowns out of Team CC. So now, uh, Team CC want to be taking high ground, anchoring on high ground. And Team BM, they want to be setting up their core on high ground, and then, like, yeah, and then they just want to eventually, like, get a slam or try to, like, Try like maybe boops and boop like people off high ground, but with the ball changes it's hard. Yeah, just try like you know, slam and make space. And while meanwhile, Team CC has to scout with the ball and and like and, like yeah. Well, unless they do this. So like right here, this was a uh, this engage was questionable. Like, how how are you gonna take advantage of this engage? I mean, it forces out. I mean, it does force out them. Um, Okay, let's see this. Where does this land happen? Let's see their HP. Oh, Zen does get spooked. Like this, the disadvantages I have having Zen is that even if like, if you have like a brig, then like it means that like um, you can't you can like take. You can't take a beating. Let's say there was a break. Like you can't take like a uh, like a, a ball engage, and as, as long as there's like no like su significant support from the core, then the ball engage is kind of useless. It may force out a bash, or the bash is gonna come back. But like if you're running a Zen, the Zen's always a vulnerable target. It, and like if you like if you like you know do it like if you get a good enough engage on a Zen, like regardless of any whether you have support or not, then you're just gonna like either kill the Zen or force out a cooldown. Well, like maybe in more or even force out like trans in this case so idea that's what what they want but like the thing is disengage is is like kind of like 2v6 like wh where's the core support there's no core support there's nothing preventing them from just all focusing like the ball and the ball doesn't have significant escape options as well and yeah like they just pop the window and they kill the ball and now like 
now Team C's are in a really good place. There's nothing that prevents them from. And as you can see, like, if you if you kill the ball, like, like you can just like literally just brawl it out. Like, people don't notice, but double shield is surprisingly brawly. So, I, I mean, like, they don't want to like actually go in here. They still want to set up angles around a point, but Sigma just like kind of goes in. But um, anyway, so so Team BM they should back up. Don't take any more poke. Or at least, like, you know, play passively so they don't get poked by Orisa. And yeah, so they trade the Blizzard for, like. Yeah, but, like, as you can see, like, Team CC are holding really forwards. They're just. They're just trying to prevent them. Team BM from even getting sight lines. And how to prevent that is that, like. You you would have maybe have the ball go, you would have the ball like try to like go for the back line force like s these people back, but like they don't have the ball right now. So well, or or the ball is like still trying to stage. So like Team BM should play really carefully until like the ball engages and actually forces them out. And let's see, let's see if Team CC are poking out the ball. So yeah, look, they're poking out the ball. They're poking out ball. And like when, and now ball takes a bit of poke damage. Ball's ball gets like a shield forced out early. That's bad. So it looks like yeah, like they're doing it. Team C's doing a good job of poking out the ball. I think I think it's uh, as as hand like actually poking out the ball. I'm not sure where the ball is, but yeah, there's like someone's poking out the ball. So good, I think yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 if you if you like poke out the ball like this, it means that like Team CC can like actually hold their forward positions here. So like so like Chun Sam like either like just took a bit too much poke like before. I mean it's gonna be hard to like you know travel like try to get a good engage through these sight lines. Like try to get like a good engage with full HP through these sight lines. But mm, does it have to do with the fact that like? Team BM, like, this is good by Team CC to, like, you know, hold this close. It, it kind of forces them to, it kind of, like, actually, like, cuts out the ball from the core, so good. But, cuts off the ball, so they can't really draw attention, but, yeah. Anyway, so, like, they, they get, they force out the trans, but, like, now, how does, how does innovation, oh, wait, how does innovation die? Do they just poke the Han? Do they just peek the Hanzo? I think they do. They just peek the Hanzo. So like this is, uh, or like the Hanzo just like, or like they're just too overextended in general. Like their their Sigma's like behind, trying to deal with something in the back line while they're just trying to they're just holding forward positions for no reason. So like eventually disengage does come and it forces the Sigma back. So but like when this happens, like you know. Like, Team BM's DPS, I mean, no, Team CC's DPS, they back out out of there. Like, they don't, like, they don't stay there. There's no Sigma to really hold that space for you, so. Like, this is sloppy. Kind of sloppy from Team CC. Now, but, as I say that, Wu Hyo, like, kills, um, we Rebirth, like, where where is Rebirth position? Sorry for showing this frame to so long. But like, uh, yeah, like, but yeah, like, the thing is not like that freeze already did its damage. It, it forced like the core to play in this isolated room, and that's where like you can just like establish easy angles and just finish the fight from there. Like even with all your DPS, the Sigma is gonna get the kills. And this this actually equalizes the fight, and like now um. Per, no, this is just like you know trades, just trading damage. But uh, yeah, like, but the thing is that like, as long as they still leave Ball and Tracer alive, and and the fact that they had to contest that meant like meant like they can't just poke out the Ball and Tracer if the like uh, if their DPS is still alive, they could just like kill, try to kill Ball and Tracer outright, and then try to win the fight off of that. But they kill, they lost lost their DPS so. Yeah. 
And you're off the back of that one as well. Huge player advantage. So Team BM get the better of this. Okay, so let's look at the next fight. So they have like double tank ults. So, um, uh, so like, eh, but like Team BM does have dragons. So and like pulse bomb. So if they, so like maybe Elicit goes for like a cheeky pulse bomb, kills one or two. They have no trans or anything. They have Immor though, so like, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, like, so like, Team BM may play aggressively, just try to prevent, like, Team CC from setting up angles to use their bongo advantage. But, uh, yeah, I think this should be Team CC's win if they uh, set up their angles, because bongo is really strong. It's insane. So, yeah, uh, it looks like they're playing really aggressively, and they're, look, they're actually playing, like, yeah, really forward. And... And where's the pressure by the ball? Where's the ball? Well, like, if anything, there should be a ball, like, you know, ball going, like, maybe maybe slamming. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even possible. Well, I think it is, but, like, yeah. Slamming here. Like, I would expect, like, some simultaneous pressure. Mm -hmm. What Team CC have, could do, like, though, is, like, they, they could just poke out the ball. They're, they're not really good at healing up their ball, like, Team BM. They could just poke out the ball before, like, they even get to engage. Uh, and it looks like their ball is there. Did I not see the ball? I don't realize how the ball takes so much damage. Oh, the ball, like, it was still staging, I think. Oh, the ball was still coming back. But, like, they don't stage. Like the like this is a like good out tempoing play, but except like the the ball, uh, like why do, doesn't the ball at least like you know go under and then right side to at least draw some attention? I don't like this. Um, here's the thing, like uh, Team BM do get people really low, but I wish like don't they wish there was a ball here to finish them off, or at least allow the tracer to go in? So this was a good good uh, good plan, but bad play, bad, badly executed. Where's the ball? And now they engage, but like look, this is look, look ball has like some tech malfunction only, but like but like look this there's just like this pressure is just like desynchronized. And they were able to just kill the ball because, like, they're not under like any lot of pressure even. Like, look at look at this. Imagine your team CC. Like, it, it looks kind of scary, but actually, look at you're still healthy. Like, the pressure's not there. It's not. It's like really staggered pressure. Not good. And team CC like just popped their ultimates. Like their chance. Team BM's chance to win the fight is gone. Yeah, so yeah, badly executed. And now, like, Team CC, this... Now this is, like, this ex kind of excels for, like, double shield. Well, like, they're... The angles are kind of scuffed, though, like, maybe for double shield, but... Yeah, like... The sight lines are really, really long, though, yeah. And it's gonna be kind of hard for Ball to stage. There's not a lot of, like, high ground to use as much as the last one. Yeah, and and like the flanks and angles like let's say like in, if you want to let's say you're like holding here if you want to like slam you gotta have to roll back or take this really long rotation or or through like this right side so like yeah not really good staging options we'll see how this goes though uh team bm's comp should have does have they have, don't have a hanzo which is better in these sight lines so now team cc are in the ash so they do have to like close the distance a bit. They can't just play like you know, really long sight lines. They have to close the distance for Ash. And like so, Team CC placed their sick high ground, and I want their Ash using it as well. So their Ash does use it. Good. But like, look at this. Like, like, how do you? How is it? It's not easy to engage on this if you're like Team BM because like, you either have to like cross sight lines just to stage, which gives you a lot of poke, and then like even then there's not. Why are you gonna slam? You can knock people off the window, maybe knock them to your Hanzo, but still, 
hard to stage. But on the other hand, like, um, I mean, once Team CC is like shields are broken, then 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 Babel gets a lot of value. And like once Ball does start drawing attention to shields, like mm, like Babel can do things. So like I think this is what happens. Oh, it's actually a pull combo, and Babel does kill like um, Super Rich. So like now like they they kill like Super Rich and like this equalizes the poke situation. It might mean that like Team BM like once they break the shields actually has a slight poke advantage in their Zen, but but as I say that, Babel does overstay his welcome. But does get res, so like it's okay, yeah. Unless it goes for his cheeky pulse bomb. It forces out M more, but I think you know, does is there was there already an M more? Yeah, yeah, they do M more. Yeah. Or does he actually pulse bomb into the M more? Oh, so they do M more. I would have preferred maybe if like you know Chun Sam was there to maybe knock people off the M more. So that's another example where I would prefer like some synchronized pressure. Like, like you know, Chun Sam is like all the way back there waiting for heals, while like you know Elissa like goes in. So yeah, yeah, like it's been the problem all game. Like Chun Sam is just have getting poked out like so hard. Good for Team CC, but bad for Team BM. Um, they're just getting poked out, and they don't have like, even a break to like heal Chun Sam. So they're gonna be like all dependent on like Babel to carry. Outside, like you know, the few engages that Chun Sam does have, and uh, and like let's see, and like right here, yeah, yeah, like so. Let's see what happens here. So Babel gets res. They throw the dragons, but oh, Jun Chun Sam just gets. This is these have been some really bad engages by Team BM. I think Team BM are just engaging with like no HP. Honestly, like I think that's all, or like, or, or like sitting in the position where they can just be poked out. So their ball has not gone any value or much value at all. And now Team CC just have to break through the choke. Like they they don't want to stay in the choke. They want to break through the choke and like establish their sight lines. They don't want to just like st stack on card. But yeah, like they win this fight for free. And they get past the choke, and yeah, it's, their ball's just not getting any value. And they're gonna end this with like 25 seconds, so like, like with like three caps. So um, now like let's look at this is a troll comp. Now like Team BM are, this is weird. Like Team BM are actually now on, now on brawl on the attack, and like. If Team CC plays it right, then like um, th this, then like yeah, they should just win, win like first point. Because like look at this, um, the Torb. I mean like there are like quite a couple sneaky flanks and angles where you can place like um, place like you know, turret, and turret, but like yeah, aside from that, mm, mm, it's a good angle threat, but uh, yeah, like Torb. <laughs> Mm, it could work though, but but like yeah, yeah like uh, maybe like the um, yeah they'll just be putting the turn on an annoying angle, so it's not bad. The torp's definitely not a bad pick. It's uh, it's just that like the sight lines are so long that yeah, it'd be hard to aim like your door things. So now, like Team BM, like so Team CC, so can well, do you trying to like hold angles? They don't want to stack together. They want to hold angles like around the double shield. What Team BM have to do though is like, firstly, they have to clear the high ground, clear the high ground, clear the high ground. Like sometime, they have to clear the high ground. Like in general, like they 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 might be trying to force people to drop off the high ground, but like. They could just like drop Orisa high ground and then like, hey, you can try to rush them, but like, hey, you're just gonna eat your backline then because there's a Sigma and maybe Ash or Torb on high ground, and there's also a turret behind, so like, good luck. So like, what Team BM's like main like chances of winning are either to catch Team CC off guard or like, 
or like they just have to go for like ultimate engages. They have to go for like um beat engage, like window engage. They just have to make space, take angles, and then go in for like an explosive like engage on like maybe Arisa or Sigma. But they do have to like clear angles though, like in the neutral. But like if they have ultimates, they could try to like cheat a bit and like just like you know go for a straight on brawl, and which they will win. Um, so like uh, aside from that I want them to use their ultimates offensively not like defensively because what you're defending against you're defending like when you're using defensive ults like defensively like nowadays like it's actually like less preferred to like you know use ults defensively even defensive ones because like even the, the fact is that even if you like defensive ult like some ult that like you know, the enemy uses then like they're still gonna like use that ult you're, you're still not gonna be able to like you know press the attack you're gonna have to play defensively and unless you're popping the defense off when you're like normally playing defensively you're trying to attack and they try to like counter with like maybe grab and you use beat then like it, they're just gonna like take positions around you and then they're just gonna have the positional advantage so you get grabbed right then like let's say the enemy's playing like brawl so like they're 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 like you know Kree is just gonna take angles. Their diva's gonna take angles while you're grafted, and who cares if you're trans? Who who cares if you like trans or like? Well, why are you running like Zen and Brawl? Except if it's goats. But um, you know, if you get like who cares if you beat like we just establish angles around you and we just kill you after you exit the trans. So like, if you don't use like ultimates offensively, like even the defensive ones, then you're just gonna give the enemy an advantage. Unless like they overcommit somehow, so uh, this is good. Team Team BM are taking the high ground. They're taking the high ground. This is first step really necessary. They can't just stay on low ground. And their turrets back. Oh, this is good turret positioning. They're, so their turrets taking the off angle here. So they uh, when they eventually like go down the stairs or even like go here, like turrets will be shooting them in the back and forcing them to look back. And in this case, like, Team CC will can, like, go more aggressive if they're distracted on the turret. So as you can see, they're taking angles, they're taking angles. Oh. So now uh, Team CC are going down, they're trying to mm, important. They don't push the Orisa, they push... Like, if they have ultimates, it'll be okay, but, like, they want to clear... They, they, they don't want to, like, play into, like, their concave. They want to play away from it. Like, either go here, or you can drop here, or go from here, but... They are trying to rush one side. That's good. Uh, they have to kite back now, but, like, the May wall just gets... But the May wall... This May wall just it gets out the BAP, so the BAP was late. Oh, wait. Wait, where do they kite back, though? Like, they should have kited, kited back like a bit earlier actually like I think I got kite back earlier so this kiting was a bit too late but the problem is with this list that like oh they trade they actually trade baps it's it's probably just a sloppy rotation oh like while that's happening diva like diva should should not be like just rushing the map like the map's already dead who cares like Diva, you have to be DMing this angle, like, like protect. You, you need to be protecting your team. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, uh, you know, you have to be DMing this angle. Otherwise, like, they're just gonna, they might get picks. Like, this map's already dead. Like, just focus on like, not inting while you're doing doing this. But this is sloppy. That's what happens when you don't control off angles, and more importantly, they don't deal with the turret. They just, I mean, like, it's okay. But, like, someone has to eventually deal with this turret. And, like, Rebirth dies through that sloppy mistake. So they trade Baps, but... They trade Baps, but, uh... Now, like, Team BM should have the advantage. They've closed the distance quite a bit. But, like... But, like, now, like... Actually, Team CC might have the advantage because... They're... Not only on defense, but uh, so like they can just kite back. They don't have no, no doesn't matter. But like more importantly, like they they can just like they can just like you know poke from range. Like all they have to do, like even though they're baps then, like doesn't matter. This comp is gonna have superior poke. So like they just have to poke, they just have to poke out Team BM while like Team CC have to brawl. Like, losing your BAP, like, the earlier you lose your BAP, the more devastating it is for Brawl. 
like, the much more devastating it is. Like, if you lose your BAP, like, really early on, GG. Like, you know, if you have beat engage or something. Okay, you killed one, great. Now you don't have sustain to, like, keep your advantage. Like, like think of all as, like, ebb and flow, like, power spikes. Like, you know, Brawl can power spike, but, like, you need the BAP to, like, you know, heal up the team B in between, so. So, like, Team BM, like, they do... They do have respawns, uh, slight respawns, and they, and they, so yeah, they do come back with BAP, and yeah. But like, this is an expensive, this is kind of expensive, in terms of like, yeah. This is like kind of like, you know, scary fight, that's what I meant to say. So, um, right here, Team CC, oh, wait. So, like, now, like, look, uh, this is, no, I don't like Arisa, like, holding open like this, because, especially as they had window, and this is, like, a, and what I want Team BM to do is, like, they have window now, now go take angles, and then, like, just rush in after, that's, that's how you really use window, like, use window, you, you, you poke through it a bit, you might want to put, you might decide to poke through it a bit, or you can use it to make space, and if you use it to make space, then you can just rush in. I can see they're kind of splitting apart and make taking angles. Good, good. But the problem is that the problem is Team CC do have ultimates to kind of recontest, and Bob is really effective against Brawl just because like. Just, just because, um, and Brawl tends to take so forward positions that, like, it's easy to put a Bob in, in behind them, so. In this case, Team CC, like, bobbing here is good, and it, it just, like, draws so much attention away. And now it gives, like, some Team CC space to set up. So they have to play, like, passively now. So they freeze, they try to freeze the Bob, mm, interesting. I love it. Uh, I don't. I don't like that they're committing so much to just deal with this Bob. They just have to like. All they have to do really is not. They don't have to like you know stay in this fight that long. Like, like let them take their. Let them take some sight lines. Let them take some space. But like you don't have to like literally blizzard plus high noon a Bob. Like just just take natural cover and then like, and then like you know you don't even, you don't have to use either of these. Just beat engage maybe. Beat engage would win. Like, who can, like, they might pop window, but in this case, like, mm, you could just, like, you know, uh, freeze, freeze through the window, so it's kind of useless. But, like, yeah, they just, like, right here, like, they use their resources. Now they're kind of low. They're, they're, they're kind of playing Brawl the traditional way, but, like, you, you, you can't, like, the tr traditional way is, like, you know, take sustained fights like this, but the modern way of playing Brawl is that you use your advantage. Now, great. You pushed up. Take them, like, Here's your trophy. You gotta kill. Here's your fucking trophy. Now, what you have to do is like you have to stabilize. You have to like heal up. You hide behind natural cover. You stabilize like during the like mid fight, and then like afterwards, like after like you have like resources or like even if you build alts in this case, then you can go in again, take an explosive engage, and like just make so much space. Like this high noon could have been used just to like you know make space and then make get angles before beat engaging in, or just normal engage could have worked. They don't have to like invest alts, like these are the defensive, these are defensive alts. Like I mean defensive use of alts, not defensive alts. But yeah, like this is just bad. How do they lose this? Like they, they, they just like use like these like offensive alts defensively. And, and like they don't realize, like, Team CC, if you, the longer that you take, like, defensively, then, like, the longer to get, the more to get value. So, like, now they have to, like, reset. Oh, this is sloppy. So, like, firstly, I'm not sure why they're taking too much poke. They could just be trying to farm window, I think that's what they're going to do. But, like, they have their window as well, so... So what they want to do is like they pot in my opinion they should have just beat engage right here. They should have just beat engage and just like rushed in, and like this beat engage will be supported by by window, and then they could window like maybe right here try to get good fire strike combo, 
and stuff, but like, this is, they're just right here, I think they're just using ults defensively after the fight's already lost because you lost your Rhine. No, that's not how you use all the, that's not how you use alts in, in like right nowadays, like you don't use them as defensively anymore. No, yeah, they, they're just, they just one off a single window. That's bad. Like... Like, if you want to play Brawl, like, you have to play aggressive. And not aggressive is in mindless aggression like yester, like yester years, but like... Really just like burst aggression. You need to plan out shit and like use ultimates to like enable aggression and then synchronize it. And right here, hmm. So right here, let's see this engage. They have no ultimates to play with, so Team CC could just play backward and pop Bongo. Could, they could just Bongo. No, so this is. A, I would have preferred if Team CC held back or a bit more back, because like they want to get value of their bongo, obviously. So like, they needed they needed the long sight lines. Um, like what? Like if they held here, what Team BM could do is like rotate high ground, but like, um, but yeah, that's just gonna waste time, and you don't have a lot of this resource that I'm talking about. So. But, um, uh, I'm not sure about this. But, oh, this pin, though. This shatter, though, yeah. So, as uh, Han kills Mago, now, like, the Lucio, like, losing the Lucio is not as bad because, like, they're already, like, well into the fight. Well... Like losing the Lucio allows Team C to kite, but kite more. But like, they by that time they're already their backs are already against the wall. So, and because like Arissa does get pressured, I think I think Team CC held way too forward here. They should have tried to give give space. Like Team C wanted, might probably want to like you know hold forward and then kite, but I don't like it. Like you have Bongo, just try to maintain those sight lines. So at least some. Well, at least they do get a pick though. So I think right here, like if you're Team CC, like you just give up, you just give up like lost space and try to touch cart last second. Do about someone on the point. But yeah, man, the they to so but yeah, like they window, they poke it through it, and then uh, and then yeah, it's a slow Narissa though, they so you can just literally intend there are no real angles to worry about, or you don't even have to really take angles, you just kill. And, and interesting, uh, Team CC switched to Arissa Ryan. Okay, how did how does Ezhan kill Reaper? Uh, a bit sloppy, probably just a bit sloppy positioning. Probably using, probably a bit too greedy using this window, but so. Team BM should still win. Please tell me they do. At least they lost their bat late, so it's not gonna be as bad. It's still bad, but it's not gonna be as bad. I'm just so nervous. They got a blizzard if they really needed to commit it, but shouldn't need to. I'm gonna be able to complete this cap. Um, so now they take the point, and now, like, they're. Uh, I think they just they just switched to Ryan just to contest. But. So, Team PC are back on double shield. Like, like I've seen, like, I, I've actually seen, like, May and double shield a lot more recently. And, um,. I just want to like comment on this bay pick a bit more in between while we're still like in between like checkpoints and I think it's like a, a, a willingness for like double shield teams to actually play more brawly now like nowadays like mm, like double shield is usually associated with like poke like, like you know, obviously it is a poke comp but um, now with like the may it's just like not only does may like it may like give slow down the tempo a bit, prevent them from just running over this, but 
they have running over this team, but, like, so it's a defensive pick, so to speak, kind of. But, like, it also, like, you know, in, uh, enables, like, plays where, like, Orisa Sigma just W keys in. And, like, there are times where you W key in, like, especially if the enemy is, like, weakened. And you don't want them to, like, you know, get another... You don't want them to, like, you know, recover and, like, take another engage. So, yeah, I think the May pick is, is like, legitimately getting kind of good. So now, like... Now, what do they do? So, important, like, so what? Uh, oh, my God. And not to mention, like, May actually has a lot of quite significant, significant poke. I'm sorry for stuttering, mincing my words. But. Anyways, uh, so Team BM, like, yeah, the first thing they do, like, they have Diva push card, and then they go high ground. That is important, but the only problem is that, like, Okay, uh, but like Diva and Card is okay, but like I think that they they might actually want to like hey forget about Card like because like I think the more important thing is like you know ha having a Diva to kind of DM all the spam because here's the thing the reason you run another reason you run Diva instead of Zarya is really like Diva's just much more better against spam Zarya like you can farm energy off of spam but that's not the same as like actually peeling against spam for your team. Like, D like D.Va blocks infinite damage for a short amount of time, but, R but Zarya only blocks around 200 damage for a short amount of time, which is worse. Even though you do get energy, but like, you don't, but do you really want long sustained fights against yeah, like, Devil Shield? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, this is not a reason this May wall is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, May is just fucking annoying like this. Okay, and now Team CC. Oh, holy shit. Uh, and look at this. This is like an example of Team CC actually like going really brawly with like double shield. And, like it's a, it's a thing. It's actually a thing now. Like. Like, teams will are more willing to, like, brawl with double shield. Yeah, because, like, they've, like, actually, they've, like, played it, like, you know, double shield meta. But they just played it for, like... Uh, what? But they've just, like... What the fuck is this? But they, they've just played it, um... They do, but the teams have just played double shield, like, um, for, like, a year now. Remember all the double shield meta, like, you know, how it was so popular and stuff. And, like, back in, like, you know, last year. And, like, for the last half of last year, of, like, the year before. And, um, and, yeah, yeah, like, double shield execution has just become much more cleaner over the years. Like, every, like, teams are starting to, like, you know, max, min-max double shield. Like, they're, they're, they know how to, like, be really aggressive. They know how to, like, not only, like, get value during poke phases, but also how to engage with the comp, really, like, if you have, if you want to engage. Like, so normally, like, double shield, yeah, you do want to be staying in poke phase as much as possible, but double shield, like, really has, like, Orisa's, like, can be brawly as hell sometimes. With Fortify, especially. And now this is just going to have to be one extended okay. engage all across yeah, beach on so like this is an interesting setup. So like teams, so like Team CC are actually setting up their Sigma behind. So like they're taking a really aggressive off angle, and the threat is obviously like um maybe like Team BM rushes this way and rushes up the stairs, forcing like Sigma to drop, and then you just rush, rush like you know the Sigma. But this is a but like if like Team BM are already caught out like this, like if they see the Sigma like this, one option is that they could try to like. They could try to like disengage and like try to like you know clear out the sigma, but by then the sigma would just probably like just return to safer position. But so yeah, this is like an example of like taking like the, so they're just taking a gamble here. And part of the reason why I think they they were taking this gamble is because I think they thought that like you know yeah maybe they could. Maybe the Team BM thought like they're like they're still like in the process of retreating. They haven't set up yet, but uh, so like right here. So 
Yeah, yeah, this angle is, is just too good. And, like, whatever it is, like, someone has to be clearing or at least dealing with his angles. Like, nobody is. Like, look, he's uh, Chun Sam just being shot from the back. And as Han was taking that angle as well. Well, actually, no, but, like, the May was actually providing a lot of poke. Like, if anything, the May was taking the off angle, so that if, if, if like, Team BM is clearing out this this group, then at least the May can wall it off and try to, like, slow down, like, team, like, team, like, BM, as I said, slowing down the tempo. And, and this shatter, like, is not stellar as well. Like, how are you going to follow up with it? Other than, like, pinning. And, like, the M war is going to drop. Like, that shatter, shatter, like, let me put it this way. So, um, shatter is one of the most misused ults in the game, I must say. And the reason is because, like, people just go for these really fat shatters. Like, fat, like, hero play shatters. So, like, the old way is just, like, shatter is a carry play. And the problem with this is that, firstly, they nerfed it to th from 3 to 2.5 seconds of stun. But more importantly, like, teams not only, like, not only have there been heroes that are counter, that counter this a bit, like, for example, there was a BAP with the Yimmor, but, like, also teams are much more, much more better at, like, tracking shatters and stuff, and also, like, playing around shatter. So, like, if they know they have shatter, then, like, Maybe they 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 save cooldowns even if you're not mirroring Ryan. Like part of the reason why Ryan was like meta back in the day, like this was not only goats, but um yeah, it's just that hey, you don't have a Ryan, you can't block shatters. Like I I think that's ridiculous game design. I'm glad this phase is over, but um anyways, but the other reason is just that like the shatter is just so much better like mid to late fight. Where like firstly, not only is it guaranteed because like you break shields, you you force out cooldowns. So like guaranteed shatters are better, are better than like you know reading the enemy rhyme, or enemy tanks in general. And I must put like arrows because like, because like really good rhyme still set up their shatters. They 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 won't they just won't throw it away. But like more importantly, it's just that like, you need the flanks and angles to take advantage of the new shatter with the two point five seconds. Like, when you shatter, like your team better be in position like of off angles like. If they're all pushing like from this way, then like maybe you can get a kill, but like, but like it's much more effective. Like, but once they get up, they can just start kiting back, and they might have used cooldowns to like you know keep them alive in the meantime. But like if you're like pincering them, like you know kind of pincering them with like maybe Diva, McCree, Ryan, it's just gonna be like much more effective if you shatter while not only when cooldowns are exhausted, but like you also have like um people like on the flank and the only one to follow up so like yeah shatter is like shatter is just so misused it's it's not like an early fight of carry ability it's a mid to late fight ability once like people have used their cooldowns it's it's almost just like reaper all reaper all this week when you know diva sells dm sigma sells grass but like mid to late fight D reaper all actually goes up exponentially in power like, if, if the enemy has used, like, all, has thrown the kitchen sink at you, then, like, Reaper ult is a great finishing ult. You can win the fight, you can win the long fight just by, just by, uh, Reaper ulting. And, and they have no cooldowns. So right here, like, they get the shatter, and they, I'm not sure why, like, right here, like, they have a lot of ults, uh, ults and not, not a lot of time. So, like, if anything, they should be, they should be trying to, like, beat engage. And like since someone is shattered, they can't really kite it as well. Why don't they beat? Why don't they be engaged earlier? I, th I think they were planning to be engaged, but they. You know, like, look, there was an Immor actually, but like, Chun Sam moves out of the Immor just to chase the kill. Like, see, this is what happens. Shatter can be a bait. Like, Shatter can just be a bait. Like, Shatter can just bait the, your team to like you know do dumb shit or yourself to do dumb shit. Like, I'm sorry for the wording, but. I think it's the most appropriate way of saying it, but it just baits you, your team to like do dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, well, like this being engaged would have worked if like this, like Chen Sam stayed in damn him more. So this was kind of sloppy. Again, One extended engage like I, I reckon if they beat engage, they might have just like rushed the core and separated like the Sigma from getting value. 
So it could be a good idea, as you can see, to get a kill, but they don't have a Ryan to take this base. So like the beat engage was was a, was a good was the right idea, but but they, they they just like die before it even happens, and like you know, this puts Team CC like in a great and kind of good place. So like now like at least Team BM does have Diva Bomb, but it's gonna be hard to get a good like Diva Bomb against Double Shield. So like Diva like generally Diva Bomb isn't really something you want to think of uh, like a kill, kill base ultimate like something that not kill base that's a bad name but like something that gets kills it's more like a disruption ultimate that like forces the enemy to like play on the back foot it's kind of like a tempo ultimate almost it forces the enemies like hey stop what you're doing there's a diva bomb so uh if they diva bomb it should be combined with pressure from the rest of the team so but like they do have bongo so like if they take too long so like i think they team bm like like team bm like they don't i would have preferred beat to engage like this but team bm could still try to use like high noon and and like window to like make a lot of space they should be worried about this angle i think they should be going right knowing that they're taking this angle but um even if it provides spam again like even if the risk spams it out then at least you have this high ground which you can actually get a good window from so that's one thing and then like once you have a good window you can just try to like rotate you can just try to rotate here and, and try to like engage from there but okay let's see how they go but like team cc they'll be looking to like maintain longer sight lines and um at least that means they'll be playing correctly. That is a good early kill of the easy harm, but there's so many ultimates to last out and already two members down. Oh, sorry. Anyways, uh, so like, yeah, team, team BM use windows as kind of space making. They, and how, they just want to clear this. They just want to clear like this Arissa from like, uh, from like, uh, holding this Mongo. Yeah. have no time. What is this? Wait, is this a diva bomb? Like this diva bomb is really bad. What is this? What is this? This is just sloppy. Like, more importantly, like uh, here's the thing. Like this diva is needed to like at least close the distance. I know you have like a window, but diva is needed to like close the distance. Like, you, like you can't just like W key in despite this. Like they have their own window. Well, did they even pop window, or was I mistaking it for Team BM's window? But in any case, like Team Team BM need that need the diva at least to like close the distance. And like, look, they just they just lose the fight because of such a like. I think Protect was going for an assassination play, but you don't need an assassination play. Well, is even assassination play? I'm not sure. The easy harm, but there's so many ultimates to last out, and already two members down. CC, they've just got all the ultimates. They play. Oh, like the, the execution is just so bad. Here, like you lose S hand, but like you, you, like you're, you roll, you don't fulfill your role in the team fight, so your team just loses the team fight. Oh, and and look, they team CC just shit all their ultimates. Like they lost their chance. Like Diva should at least DM. Like Bap should have made space, and then like they can go from there to make. Like, while this space is clear, they can try to clear out Sigma and that. Prevent Team CC from, like, you know, pin, like, from, like, you know, pincering this way and this way. But, um, yeah. Promise, maybe Blizzard World could have been the thing, but I think you kind of said it perfectly there. So, this is, uh, this is just so sloppy from, like, um, Team BM. I mean, good job from Team CC. Like, they did make some mistakes, but Team BM just makes so many mistakes. It's unbelievable. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for today. I mean, I'll have to review for today, and, yeah, peace out. And feel free to follow if you want to have received notifications or when I do review again. But anyways, peace.